بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Dear brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته One thing that Allah Almighty loves a lot is to give glad tidings to the believers This is repeated throughout the Holy Quran Directly or indirectly and by the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the prophets and messengers and as a statement that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the messengers and the prophets specifically to give glad tidings to people as well as warning and as an order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the prophets and messengers as well and Allah Almighty mentioned furthermore that the revelation of the Holy Quran was to clarify to people what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from them as a guidance and glad tidings to the believers, to the Muslims. So the concept of glad tidings is repeated throughout. And this was the lifestyle of the prophets and messengers. And we have a beautiful example from the life of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who used to give glad tidings to his followers. One example of it is when the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam met uh, Jabir bin Abdullah radiallahu anhuma and he said to him, shall I not give you the glad tidings about what Allah Almighty had already prepared for your father? Her father was a murderer. And then the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told him. And by the order of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to every Muslim from his time until the end of time. <laughs> The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ordered all of us, he said, give glad tidings and do not drive people away and make things easy and do not complicate things. Two beautiful orders from the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If you use them in your life as a life strategy, you will be the most productive and positive person on earth. Beautiful. Make it as, this is like an agenda in your life. Strategy, life strategy. Very beautiful order from the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to always give glad tidings to people. And now the Holy Quran also gives glad tidings, specific ones to groups and generic ones as well. In general, the way to achieve these glad tidings from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is simply by believing in Allah Almighty and doing good deeds. This is repeated often. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, give a glad tidings to the believers who do righteous deeds of great rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Allah Almighty says reward by itself, this is enough. Reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala means something great. When a person promises you something, your imagination takes you according to the person who made that statement or that promise. If a child promises that he is going to give you a very great gift, you are going to take it according to him. If someone equal to you gives you the same statement, you will take it according to your level of greatness. If someone superior to give you that, or someone extremely wealthy or important or powerful, you will take it according to that. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala simply says reward, and then he says a great reward, you can only imagine. The reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala compared to the greatness of the one who is going to give these rewards, isn't it? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us some examples of these rewards throughout the Holy Quran about what Allah Almighty prepared for them. One other aspect is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned some forms of ibadah that grants the person this glad tiding in this world and in the hereafter. And among them, the pillars of Islam. Both of them, those that are between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, such as the salah, and those that are between you and the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, such as zakah. Furthermore, among those who are going to receive the glad tidings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who are patient. Those who are patient when they are afflicted. Now, we have two things. We have a promise from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to those who believe and do righteous deeds that Allah Almighty is going to give them a pure life, good life in this world and great reward in the hereafter. Clear? Now some people understand that good life or pure life means that he is going to live problem free for example or trouble free. 
or he's going to have all kind of wealth and whatever he desires. In this world, that is not going to happen. In the hereafter, yes, but not in this world. In this world, quite the opposite could happen because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never promised this. He said, a pure life or a good life, and we'll explain this shortly. But on the other hand, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the believer that certainly we are going to afflict you, to test you with some sort of loss of different things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned different trials and tribulation. And then he says, and give the glad tidings to those who are patient. Give glad tidings. The glad tidings is to whom? Not to the one who is not going to be afflicted, but to the one who, when he is afflicted, he is patient. Now, the concept of a pure life or good life means, could, be, could mean many things, multiple things. Among them is simply living life according to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from you. Because what this means is that you are going to be among those who are successful, which is a great thing. Means, if some person, let's just say two students or university uh, students, are enrolled in two different universities, one of them is very famous and very stern and academic to the top, among the best academic institutes in the world, and another one in a normal university. Who is going to be tested and tried more? Who has to work harder? The one in the normal university or the one in the top universities? Obviously the one in the top university has to work harder to prove himself. But eventually, now or when people look at it, which one is actually living a good life? Obviously, the one in the top universities, although he is the one who is working harder. And although the one who is being tired a lot and doing lots of homework and research and so on, because the results will vary. The certificate that he is getting from the university is different from the certificate that the second one is getting, and so on. To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is greater example. The believers is similar to that. So when you see a believer being afflicted and he is patient, that person, if he is doing that patient for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is among the successful one, among those who are given the glad tidings. He is in the top universities now. He's being tested and tried at the top level. And that is what the Messenger ﷺ mentioned in the other hadith. The affair of a believer is always wonderful. SubhanAllah. Always wonderful. It's a cause for wonder. Because whatever happens to him is good for him. That is the concept of a good life or pure life. It's always good. If something good happens to him, something blissful, some source of blessings, he is thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is good for him. And if he is afflicted with the trials and tribulation, with bad things, he is patient and that is good for him. So it's a good, good situation or win-win situation. So the concept of pure life or good life you has to be understood in this. The second understanding of good life means a pure life that is in halal. So he's enjoying this world, but in halal. Maybe other people are enjoying their life much more, but not so much in halal. But what he is doing is that he is enjoying life within the limits of halal. And that is good for him, obviously. So this is a sort of pure life. The second one, uh, or the second understanding that is possible is that when an affliction happens to him, he is patient. And thus, he does have not have the anxiety and psychological problems and, 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 and all the critical things that might come from these trials and tribulation as we see with the non-believers. Which is true. This is part of real life. So Muslims, when they are tested and in trials, you rarely see, for example, suicide. Isn't it? Very many. You rarely see people who turns into criminals, for example. It's non-existing. But, and so when you, when you see the other way around, you find people who are actually enjoying this world, but in the wrong way, not from halal sources and so on. They're always having these psychological problems and the critical outcome of these, such as suicide and crimes and so on. 
much more than in Islamic societies. So the concept is, this is the pure life that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking about, or the good life that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking about. The next possible understanding also is that, whenever he is afflicted with that, he does with it the best. So the outcome of it is always good for him. Maybe he will be tested and tried, but he will be patient, and then eventually it will go, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will replace him with something better which is a reality in life as we see. Everybody in his life, maybe he had a law or some sort of trials and tribulation and difficult times. And when he was patient, eventually it moved away. And Alhamdulillah, he's in a better situation now. And so on. So that is the glad tidings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned specifically to those who are patient. Another form mentioned to those who remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and those who are humble in front of the greatness and majesty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whenever they remember Him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned this also in the Holy Quran. The other group that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also mentioned specifically are those who have khushu' in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Means they respect the status of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whenever the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioned, they fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of respect, out of magnification and praise. They feel the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the same time. They love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of the attributes of beauty that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has. Such as the attributes of mercy, the attributes of uh, compassion, the attributes of forgiveness, the attributes of generosity, the attributes of uh, help and support from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so on. And they fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the attributes of magnitude and greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and absolute power and majesty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, such being the all powerful, the stern in punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who is going to punish those who are unjust and those who hurt others and so on. So whenever they remember this, they compare it at the same time together. So they Love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and respect Him at the same time. And whenever the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described them, their heart trembles out of humbleness in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and when they remember the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another group that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned are those who practice the pillars of Islam, the pillars that are concerning them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, such as salah, and the pillars that concern other people, such as the zakah, as we have mentioned. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala added to that as well those who, when the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, their heart trembles. We probably have already explained this point. The last point that we are going to mention among the types of glad tidings given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to specific groups, a specific one that is, is linked exclusively with the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is ihsan, which is perfection in relationship with the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while doing ibadah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is the utmost or the uppermost level in Islam in relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called Ihsan. Ihsan to do the best and to say the best. Treating the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by your speech and your action in the best possible way at any given situation. So the best is different from a situation to other, from person to another, from creature to another creature. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allah Almighty commanded goodness and perfection in it and ihsan towards all creatures in everything. In everything. Allah Almighty commanded ihsan in every affair, everything. Whatever it might be that you are saying or doing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already ordered you to do ihsan. So those muhsineen, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them special glad tidings and mentioned this specifically by name saying, وَبَشِّرِ الْمُحْسِنِينَ And give glad tidings specifically to al-muhsineen. Now, the concept of giving glad tidings, glad tidings, giving glad tidings to people instill happiness in, in, in their hearts. Give them relaxation. Give them courage to go on and do what they can, the best they can.
And when the whole society is practicing it, as the Messenger وسلم, ordered every Muslim to do that, everybody will be happier and better and will do the best he can. And that in turn will return to you as well, living in a better society and, and enjoying the pure life and the good life that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised to the believers. Now that concept of uh, Ihsan, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa mentioned, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, there are ways to reach that level. The level of happiness in your heart comes from contentment. The first thing is to be content with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you, with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala distant for you or against you. Whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala distant for you, you should be content with it. Whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you, you should be content with it, not complaining. So the first one, be realistic, accept where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put you. That is the top most approach toward happiness. Many people think that happiness is a destination that you will reach, a time that you will come when you will be happy. A certain place or time or destination or status, it's not like that. People when they are young, for example, I'll be happy when I grow up. He gets to school, I'll be happy when I finish study. I'll be happy when I go to high school. I'll be happy when I am in the university. I'll be happy when I graduate. I'll be happy when I find a job. I'll be happy when I get enough money and I'll be happy when I start my own family, get married. I'll be happy when I'll have children. I'll be happy when I own my own house. I'll be happy when I own my own car. I'll be happy when... And they always think that they'll be happy at a certain time. Isn't it? This is real life. So people always think that happiness will come eventually somehow. And this is the wrong approach to life. That is not the concept of happiness. Because there is no such destination that you are going to reach. Because every destination that you reach, you think that is not happiness. This is not what I was waiting for. So you think of another one. So you are actually tricking yourself. So the concept of happiness actually is a status of mind and heart at any given time. You might find a person who is afflicted with every kind of problems and he's joking, he's enjoying life and he's living life as if there is no tomorrow. Isn't it? You, you know many people like that. There's no worry. Not worrying about anything. And that is a wise thing to do, by the way. If you are actually wise, mean not just squandering and being careless. But if something is out of your hand, why should you worry about it? So simply, any situation that is given to you, be realistic. That is for Allah subhanahu wa Now, it doesn't mean that being content with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you or distant for you means you do not work to change it. No. In Islam, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala afflicts you with anything, the first thing you should do is ask yourself, what have I done? Not in the way of complaining to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the way of checking yourself, auditing yourself. The righteous people, whenever something happens to them, they will return back to themselves, it's all from me. I am the reason. My soul is not pure enough, not good enough in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is why. I need more treatment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, more medication, more surgeries, more medicine to become a better person, to be healthy. Something is wrong with me. They return immediately. That is why. And they start increasing their good deeds and checking what better can they do. That is the form of ihsan we are talking about. Trying to be better all the time. So whenever something happens, whenever a dua is not answered, whenever a situation happens, they return back to themselves. And when a person does that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will immediately, shortly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to remove that affliction from him, give him what he wants. Because the idea is similar to a medicine. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you a medicine. If you take it, if you accept it, you'll be cured. End of story. If you don't, get forbid, the disease could exhalate and become much worse. And in such a case, you'll need a stronger medicine. You'll need stronger treatment. You might need an operation or amputation or very uh, drastic uh, measures to save your life. Or else, get forbid, you are doomed. Isn't it? So to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a greater example. Whenever you are, the sooner you learn from any lesson from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the sooner the lesson is ain't. Homework is done, is given to you to be a better person. If you have learned it, no more homework on that, isn't it? So the idea is similar to this. So the being content means check yourself, learn from it, and try to remove it. By apply, uh, uh, praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by increasing your good deed, by changing the bad behaviors that you, uh, you have done, whatever it might be, becoming a better person for yourself and people around you. 
And the other part regarding uh, happiness is look at those who are below you in every aspect that you have and not those who are above you. So your salary is, for example, 2,000 or 1,000 or even if it is 500. Do not look at people who are taking 10,000, 20,000. Look at people who are taking 400 or 300. Look at people who do not have a job. Look at people who are fired and they are willing to do whatever they know. I have seen PhD holders in scientific uh, studies and situations who were working as taxi drivers. It's not a job. Real life. And they are willing to do anything. When a person is disabled, what to do? So whenever a thing happens to you, look at those who are below you. What happens now? When you have this perspective, your situation is the same, but how do you feel now? You feel more content with what you have. You will appreciate what you have. You will appreciate the blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you will start enjoying them. On the other hand, if you look at those who are above you, what will happen? You will feel miserable. You will feel low, you will feel down, low receive. You will feel that you are being dealt with unjustly all the time. And you can never enjoy life in this way, isn't it? So the situation is it's a matter of perspective. Matter of perspective. How do you look? This was the advice of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in order to appreciate what you have from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. The last thing that we want to mention is remind yourself of the blessings from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala that you already have. Remind yourself all the time. You have endless types of them, uncountable ones, beyond count. Every person, no matter who, how much he is afflicted in this life, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already have countless favors upon him. Everything. If you are talking about having your senses, having your abilities, having your mental power, having family, having children, having a place to stay, having a, st a steady job, having a steady income, has, and so on. Endless situations. So now whenever, every day in the morning, remind yourself of the blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which was the attitude from the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Before sleeping and the moment you wake up, remember the good things that you have. This way you'll be positive throughout the day. You'll feel better about yourself and whatever you have. And the last part is, do not look at or check what you do not have. This is very important. Do not think about what you do not have. The moment a person is thinking about what he does not have, how would he feel? He'll feel miserable. We have one of the scholars, early scholars in Islam, among the Salaf, the early scholars, who used to say that I, he was working in the market. He says, I kept all my friends and company at that time from traders. And he was not that big in the market, so generally, because he's a scholar, he does not have that much time for the business. But he says, and I started feeling poor and miserable all the time. It's obviously, if you are living with people who are always better than you, you are always looking up to them, how do you feel? You will all feel down. So I said, and then I changed them, I replaced them with lay people, normal people. And I started feeling, alhamdulillah, extremely wealthy and happy. So what happens now? Nothing increased in his life, but his attitude changed. And that is the advice of the Messenger وسلم, as we have explained. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who will be given the glad tidings in this world and in the hereafter. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among the believers who are muhsinun. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among these who are doing the best they can towards the relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in their relationship with the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us to his divine truth and make us good for ourselves, our families, neighbor and society and then to all of humanity we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us the companions of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the highest place in paradise in al-alleen inshallah ameen wa sallallahu ala sayyidina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in